There's a quote attributed to Alfred Hitchcock that says something to the effect of, by the time I show up on the set, I've already done my job. That's because great director Alfred Hitchcock was a man who understood the importance of pre-production. By the time he showed up on location, ready to shoot, he already had his creative decisions made. He knew where he was going to put the camera, what he wanted the actors to do, and exactly what he needed to shoot to tell his story. Now, for our purposes, there are a few decisions you have to make early on to decide what kind of production you're going to be doing. And the first one is, are you doing an ENG shoot or an EFP shoot? These terms are a little bit antiquated, but they apply. ENG stands for Electronic News Gathering, and EFP stands for Electronic Field Production. Electronic News Gathering is basically run-and-gun, guerrilla-style filmmaking. Generally speaking, you're going to be working with available light and a minimal crew, maybe just shooting by yourself. If you do have somebody with you, it's probably going to be an audio operator slash camera assistant. Generally speaking, you're going to have the camera either on a tripod or using it handheld. You're not going to have a lot of extensive camera support equipment. The advantages to ENG are that it's fast, you can move very quickly because you're light and mobile, and basically it's cheap. You're not paying for a lot of crew members, a lot of equipment. The primary disadvantage to ENG is that you have limited aesthetic options, which means that your production values are going to be lower. You can't get the same look shooting by yourself with available light as you can shooting with a bigger crew with more equipment. It's just not going to happen. You can do a great job, and a lot of documentaries are done really well with the ENG style, but it's a different kind of process than a typical Hollywood blockbuster. Now, to approach that sort of blockbuster style, you're going to need to do an EFP style shoot. EFP is electronic field production, and it's based on the traditional Hollywood style film shoot. With EFP, you're going to be doing careful setups. You're not running and gunning. Every shot is going to be set up carefully in advance. You're going to be setting the scene, the French term, the mise-en-scene. Everything that's in the scene is going to be carefully put there by you. You're going to have control over everything. You're going to have comprehensive lighting, so it's going to look exactly the way you want it to look. You're going to have a larger crew. It may not be a huge crew. It may just be three or four people, but you're going to have some kind of crew helping you take care of things. You're not going to be doing everything by yourself with one other person. You may still be putting your camera on a tripod or using it handheld, but you're also, at this point, more likely to be using a steady cam, a dolly, or a crane. So you're going to have more options with moving your camera. All of this adds up to more extensive aesthetic options. Now you're really doing filmmaking. You've got control over the scene. This is going to give you higher production values. It's going to look like a bigger, more professional, more elaborate production. The disadvantages of this style are that it's slower. It's going to take you much longer to shoot a production this way when you're setting up each shot very carefully. And it's more expensive. You've got to take care of your people and you've got to take care of your equipment. And it's more complicated. Not only do you have to know what you're doing, but also all the people that are working with you have to know how to do their jobs. Another consideration you want to keep in mind when you're taking on a project is what kind of camera are you working with? If we're talking about DSLR filmmaking, then you've got a couple of things to think about. In my opinion, shooting with a DSLR is a lot more like shooting film than it is shooting a traditional video camera. Unlike a normal video camera, a DSLR is not well suited to ENG. Focus can be tricky. You've got to really take your time, make sure your focus is set properly. You can't just really hit autofocus. Every shot requires careful exposure, much like a traditional film camera. It's kind of awkward for handheld. You can do it, but it's not really designed or weighted for it. The mechanics are delicate. You can take your DSLR out into the ocean to shoot surf videos or over to Paris Island to shoot boot camp, but you have to think twice about taking your delicate instrument in there with you. Another similarity between shooting with a film camera and shooting with a DSLR is that motion picture film and compact flashcards are both a lot more expensive than videotape. And a standard 400 foot roll of film would hold 12 minutes of footage. Four gigabyte flashcard, 12 minutes of footage. So now you've got to shoot judiciously. You can't just spray and pray, as they say with videotape. You've got to actually know what you're shooting and shoot just that. You've got to keep in mind your shooting ratio. The ratio of your raw footage to your finished project in length. For example, if you shot an hour of footage and you've got a one minute project, 
then your shooting ratio is 60 to 1. Not that good. Now, the holy grail of shooting ratios was set by Robert Rodriguez back when he shot El Mariachi. Supposedly, his shooting ratio was about 2 to 1, which means that if he shot 10 minutes of footage, 5 minutes of it wound up on the screen in his finished movie. That's pretty amazing. When you shoot your project, you're going to have a few considerations to keep in mind when you're setting your shooting ratio, your desired target goal shooting ratio. The first one, of course, is cost, money. How much money do you have? How many compact flashcards can you have? How quickly can you back them up? Do you have a laptop on set? Portable hard drives? All these things take dollars. The next consideration is the speed of your edit. How fast do you have this done? If you've got a lot of time to edit, you can shoot as much as you want and sift through all your hours of footage at your leisure. If you've got to get it turned around pretty fast, you don't want to shoot too much because you're going to have too many options and it's going to take you forever to get through it all. The final consideration is creative options. How many options do you want? Are you the kind of person who likes to have subtle variations on each shot and being able to pick exactly the right one? Or would you rather just get a really good take and move on? There are different directors out there. Clint Eastwood, for example, is notorious for doing one take, get it right, move on. And he wins Oscars, so it works for him. Now, before you can win your Oscar, you've also got to figure out, are you shooting a narrative or a documentary? A narrative piece is like a traditional movie, episodic television, music videos, commercials, all examples of narrative filmmaking. The alternative is documentary filmmaking. Now, this doesn't have to be a documentary like a Michael Moore documentary. This can be a corporate promotional film. It can be a training video, or it can be an event video. Now, reality TV is kind of interesting because it's documentary styled, but of course, they set up and introduce narrative elements all the time. So there's not a clear line between narrative and documentary. It can be a little bit of a continuum with reality TV in the middle.